What's up, everyone? For my five at five today, we are talking about the All Star Game, but not necessarily the All Star Game. So obviously, Giancarlo Stanton hits a two run home run. Brian Buxton hits a home run. They take a three two lead. The AL wins the All Star Game. Stanton wins the MVP. All good things. All good things. But for me. That's not what I want to talk about because that wasn't the major thing that happened this weekend. The major thing that happened this weekend was, in fact, the home run derby because we had a 23-year-old winner in Juan Soto, but a 21-year-old runner up in Julio Rodriguez. It was absolutely incredible. It was fun to follow along with. Um, the All-Star Game is always fun, but the home run derby is always, always electric. Uh, and this year, more of the same. So shout out to Juan Soto for winning. That's awesome, but at 23, he's the old head here. He's the guy that we don't want to talk about because he's so ancient at 23. We want to talk about Julio because he hit 81 home runs in his three rounds, 32 in the first round, 31 in the second round, and 18 in the championship round against Soto. An insane, insane performance from a dude who would have been the youngest winner ever, and if he is in it next year and wins, he'll be the youngest winner ever next year, too. Um, the third youngest player to ever reach the finals of a home run derby. And his prices have been going up. So you can see this trend here. We're going to cover two cards. And his Julio Rodriguez 2019 Bowman Chrome PSA 10, his base card, you can see it trending up from 619. One month ago, it was under $100. Uh, starting price, $95.65. And you can see it trending up, getting close to the 150 and then a little over, and then settling around the $150, $160 mark. And then the last couple sales after the home run derby, all the way up to two hundred and forty-one dollars, um, an all-time high for Julio Rodriguez base PSA ten here. Really, really fun to see. And then you can see here his Bowman Chrome Mega Box PSA ten, around one hundred and sixty dollars, and was trending up, went over two hundred, and then the last couple sales were insane, one over four hundred, and the last one sitting at three hundred twenty-seven dollars and sixty-seven cents. Uh, people are clearly excited for Julio. There was obviously an upward trend, and then this home run derby has just made it explode even more. With the Mariners on a 15-game win streak and winning 18 of their last 19 games, you could expect more of the same if the Mariners stay hot and get to the postseason. Julio will be a big reason why, and if he leads the Mariners to the postseason in his first season as a rookie, all bets are off on what these cards can do in the future because he will become one of the greatest to ever put on a Mariners uniform. What's going on, everybody? Slap Socks Julian here back again with another segment here for 5 at 5, except this time I am not in my normal setup. That is because I broke into Aaron's studio to record this for you guys. So we got a special segment coming, and that is the Marvel Precious Metal Gems Market, which exploded at the end of 2021, particularly in December, and trickled a little bit into the first few months of 2022. But that's the topic we're going to be covering today, so let's dive right into it. So as many of you know, there was a record PMG sale back in December from Marvel. While this record has been broken, it was a record at the time. A red PMG Spider-Man out of 100 PSA 9 sold for $72,000, which generated quite the buzz in the market and caused a little bit of hype around the product. And on top of that, the release of Spider-Man No Way Home contributed to a lot of hype as well. So those two factors definitely bumped up the Marvel PMG market, and that is a big reason why it carried over into the beginning of 2022, but since then, it has come down quite a bit. I always like to say what, what goes up fast must come down fast as well, and the PMG market for Marvel has done just that. I decided to select two cards from Card Ladder to represent the Marvel PMG market as a whole. The first one is a 2013 Red PMG Human Torch out of 100 PSA 8, which is down 51%, which is around $513 the past six months. Went up quite a bit during that hype period, and then since then it has come down quite a bit. The second card is a Storm Red PMG out of 100, which has also come down quite a bit as of late. The past six months, it is down 15%, which is about $91. This one had a little bit more ups and downs 
than the past one that we were just looking at, but it was trending upwards as a whole for the first few months at the beginning of the PMG hype. And then since then has done a straight line down. So these two cards are a great representation of the Marvel PMG market and definitely something to look at when you're deciding whether or not to buy a Marvel PMG card at the moment. In recent news, Thor Love and Thunder was released by Marvel, which was another blockbuster hit for Marvel, bringing in hundreds of millions of dollars in the first few weeks. Although it got mixed reviews, it held the number one spot in the box office for a few weeks. I personally enjoyed this movie quite a lot, and what many people would expect the Marvel PMG market to get a bit of a boost from this movie being released and the great release it had. However, it has not happened in that way. An example, Thor. So this is the title character of the movie. So you would expect the biggest jump to happen to him if there was going to be one. His 2015 red PMG out of 100 SUC 9 sold for 1560 back in April on April 9th. And then the most recent sale of this was just a few days ago on July 17th for $510. So you can see that drastic drop in price. Was this card ever really worth $1,560 in my eyes? Probably not. But you can see that the prices have come down quite a bit and they will likely not go back up to the prices they were at in December and early January and a little bit in February. So this is just another great representation of the drop this market has had. Another great indicator of the Marvel PMG market, especially the high-end cards, is these two cards, which will be ending an auction in the next few weeks. We have that red Spider-Man PMG out of 100 PSA 8 or PSA 9, excuse me, once again, which is selling, has a current starting bid of $10,000. And then we also have a green PMG out of 10 PSA 8. Another also has a starting bid of $10,000. And this card sold for $80,400 back in April 9th. So you can just see how big that card was back then. Will both of these cards reach the numbers they did before? Probably not, but it's definitely something to watch. That's all I got you for you guys today with the Marvel PMG update. Thanks for tuning in. What is up, everybody? It's Zach from at Premier Soccer Investing, bringing you the Slap Sox FC 5 at 5 take of the week. Let's get into it. Today, I'm going to be talking about two players, two young players who have had very strong starts to their preseasons, but who I think when the season starts will have their card markets taking very divergent paths. First, I'm going to talk about Ansu Fati. So Barcelona, in their first official match of the, their preseason, played in Miami. Obviously, a 6-0, 6 -0 steam rolling, as you can see here. Fati looked good in this one, getting on the score sheet with the third goal in the 41st minute. However, I don't think this is a sign of great things to come for Fati this season. The reason that I think this is that because of the strength of the transfer window that Barcelona has had, they had no money. Everyone thought they wouldn't be able to bring in players, and the general consensus was that they were going to have to really, really rely on players like Fati. But with the signings of Lewandowski and Rafinha and the re-signing of Dembele, along with bringing Aubameyang back and Ferran Torres too, it, they're really starting to have a logjam up front for those major minutes, and I think Fati's pretty far down the pecking order at the moment. I would think Barcelona is going to be throwing out a starting front three of Lewandowski, Rafinha, and Debele. That leaves Fati as a rotation player at best. And as we can see from his card market, yeah, he's lost a ton of value in the in the past year and a half or so when we're looking at his 2019 Topps Chrome Champions League Sapphire Edition PSA 10. These crazy sales at the top are when the card first came out. And yes, some of this decline is due to the uh, number that have come back from PSA. However, Fati didn't have the best season this past year coming off his major knee injury. And while he's still in contention for the Spain side for the World Cup, it doesn't look like he'll have a starring role for that team either. So I think we're going to continue to see this further downward trend that has brought a 92.73 negative growth rate. I wouldn't be surprised if this car continues to dip even below 150 or even $100 because of how little opportunity I think Fati will have this season to provide the goals and assist numbers that the people who are buying his cards look for to make those decisions on those purchases. And it's not necessarily the fault of the player. I think Fati has quality. It's just the, the, the day I think he's behind players that are better than him and with the amount of financial 
commitment that Barcelona has now to Lewandowski, Rafinha, and Debele signing that new contract, they kind of have to play them or it really leaves more egg on their face than Barcelona already has at the moment. So I think this season is going to be a struggle for Fati. And But a player who had a really rough season last season and a team who had a really rough season who I think could be in for a bit of a bounce back year is Manchester United. So United have looked really, really good in their preseason so far, winning 4-0 against Liverpool, beating Melbourne victory, and then beating Crystal Palace. And Rashford has scored in two of these three games – and I think Rashford really is primed for a bounce back year, especially with the news of Cristiano Ronaldo not being at preseason right now. He wants to leave the club. And even if he stays, that means that first month of the season, he's not going to be fully up to speed, not going to be fully fit. And that creates a huge opportunity for Rashford, especially when his competition for a starting role isn't that steep at the moment with really United's main attackers being Ronaldo, should he stay, Martial, Sancho, and Rashford. And that's about it and then Bruno Fernandes, but you expect him to play more in a central attacking midfield role. Along with having Eric Ten Hag, who I think is a quality, quality manager and which would only help Rashford, I think he's going to be able to play him back himself back into contention for England and get himself on that World Cup squad. He is a favorite of Southgate, and he doesn't need to hit too rich of a vein of form for Southgate to put him back in that squad. And there's a lot of opportunity with his cards right now. As we can see from his 2016 Panini Select Silver PSA 10, this is a card that has gone down 90% in the last two years. It started at 700 climbed all the way over $1,000 to $1,005, and is down now to $72. It really won't take much for him to rise back up again, especially with how big of a fan base United had, which leads to tons of United collectors as well. And I truly think Rashford's going to be able to hit the ground running this season. He looks strong, fit, confident so far this preseason. And the opportunity is going to be there with United really having not brought in too many attacking players to compete with them at the moment. The cloud of Ronaldo leaving hanging over the club at the moment. I think Rashford's in for a bounce back. And I think there's buying opportunity with his cards going for it. That's going to do it for this week. As always, thanks for watching. What's going on, everybody? Slap Sox Julian here, back again with another F1 segment here at 5 at 5. After no Grand Prix this past weekend, F1 fans can finally rejoice with the French Grand Prix this upcoming weekend. So let's talk about it. The schedule for this upcoming weekend is as follows. The race is 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. on Sunday, qualifying from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. on Saturday. And then there's the typical three practices with the times listed below. Super excited for this Grand Prix after nothing this past weekend. And we're going to be talking about a few of the drivers that will be tar participating in the Grand Prix for this upcoming weekend. Firstly, I have to shout out the two French drivers who will be driving in their home race for this Grand Prix. Esteban Ocon and Pierre Gasly were both born in France, so it's going to be a great race for them. Super excited for them to be in front of their fans. Um, we talked a little bit about Esteban Ocon last week, so I'm not going to be touching on him too much this week. But I will be talking about Pierre Gasly because I have not touched on him in any of the episodes so far. Even though I am a fan and Aaron is a fan of Pierre Gasly, we're going to try and take this from an objective standpoint, just looking at his results, which have been fairly disappointing. As you can see on this slide, there is his results so far in the season. Very inconsistent, definitely not met expectations after last season. He did very well, surprised a bunch of people. There were rumors about him moving to a bigger team due to his great performances in not the best car. However, this season, the car looks worse than it did last season. There's a ton of problems. Gasly has looked strong multiple times in practices before many of the Grand Prix, but hasn't been able to pull it off during the race due to technical problems, team strategies, a handful of different things, which has been very unfortunate for him. Pierre Gasly is not completely to blame because a lot of this stuff is out of his hands, but I bet he's hoping and the Alpha Tori team is hoping that he can pull out some points this weekend in the French Grand Prix. There is a lot of fingers to be pointed at Alpha Tori considering how well he did last season and how slow he started this season. Hopefully they come in with a better team plan and his car is ready to go not only through the practices but into qualifying and the race. 
His stuff has tanked quite a bit this season as well, since he has been performing below expectations after a great last season. His 2020 tops Chrome Sapphire Base PSA 10 is down around 60% the past six months, which is a drop of about $181. You can see it's really only gone downhill from the start of the season. It is currently priced at $120. So if he can start to get back into the points, that would be great for him and great for his cards as well. Moving on to Fernando Alonso. Since we talked about Esteban Ocon last week, we are going to talk about the other driver for Alpine, which is a French team. Fernando Alonso, as many of you know, former world champion. He's been around in the sport for such a long time, and he has been doing fairly consistent this season as well, except he did start the season quite slow, only having two points in his first race and then had zero points for a few consecutive races after that. However, he currently sits 10th in the driver's standings, which is not bad by any means, and he has 29 points points. So he is definitely going to be looking to capitalize on the momentum he has so far. He finished or he started, excuse me, he started second place in the Canadian Grand Prix. So that was a great moment for him and Alpine as a whole. However, he didn't finish that high up in that race, but I know he is excited and ready for this next race. Since Fernando Alonso does not have any cards in 2020. His first cards came out this year. So his 2021 Dynasty cards are one of many that are in demand. 2021 Dynasty as a whole has not done too well in terms of sales, unless it's the Lewis Hamiltons or the Charles Leclerc's or Max Verstappen. But Fernando Alonso's sales have been very strong considering it's his first Dynasty card. Here's two examples of cards that have sold recently. Uh, his zipper out of 10 sold for $2,160 on July 16th. And then his triple patch out of five red sold for $1,276 on July 12th. That's all I got for you guys today on this segment of 5 at 5. So thanks for tuning in. What's up, everyone? And we are back with another 5 of 5 here for the FlipQuest 2022. This week, we have a super special episode. I'm sure if you followed our content on YouTube, on Instagram, on Newsletter, wherever it is for the last two months, you'll know that the Camp Custom Charity event is happening right here or right now in July. Um, we've already done a couple live streams at this point. Nate's about to do one uh, tonight on Thursday. So good luck to Nate uh, on whatnot at 6 p.m. Eastern time. And the most important thing for today's episode right here that we're talking about is going to be the PWCC 100% charity auction ending on July 31st at 10 p.m. Eastern time. You might be wondering, where can I find all the Cam Kesem cards in this auction? So really just go right into pwccmarketplace.com, hit the weekly Sunday auction up at the top, hit sort and filters, and PWCC did a, us a huge solid with this. They built in a special event at the very top of the sort and filters right there. It's called Kesem Charity Auction, very self-explanatory. It says, in partnership with Slab Socks, all proceeds will be donated to Camp Kesem, an organization that gives kids whose parents are facing cancer a life-changing camp experience. You hit that, you click apply, and then bang, all 114 cards are right there. It's, in, it's just super, That's super incredible. cool to see that. Isn't that amazing? It's absolutely uh, one of the nicest things. I know, and, and they didn't have that feature built before, so they had to you know put in the full dev request to build that entire feature for us. It's amazing, and then you can you know filter however you want to. Um, once you you know want to find specific cards or categories, whatever. But there's only 114, so it won't take you too long to scroll through. And then uh, you can also click. Uh, it'll be in weekly auction number 28. Just know that you've got to either be selected no no weekly auction or just number 28 uh, for all the custom cards. And then from there, bid away, and uh, we can't wait to see what these things sell for. And now let's uh, look at a preview of all the cards. We've got 114 items as of right now already loaded up in the PWCC weekly auction going live tonight for bidding starting at 10 p.m. Eastern time. You can start to put all your qualifying bids in and you want to get as many qualifying bids in on these as possible. So at the night of the 31st, you can bid in extended bidding and try to win as many of these cards as you can for the kids of Camp Kesem uh, to send kids to camp for free whose parents have cancer. So there's 114 items right now, but by the end of you know the auction, there'll probably be 130 something. Maybe we'll, we're going to be flash auctioning uh, some cards throughout the weekend and early next week. They're arriving a little bit later, but there are a ton of good things in here. And as you can see, I'm scrolling through the page right now. Huge one right there with the Wander Franco Blue Auto of 150. There's a little Garrett Mitchell action for Nate that I'm sure he's interested in. And how about this little Yelich uh, Milwaukee Pride flag right there? I think I might need to get in the in the mix on that one and throw some bids 
bids in uh, to cool. try to win that. Pretty cool. And then if you watched our Flip Quest live stream from last week when we bought uh, $5,000 worth of cards for Kessel, we've got the Curry right there. That's going to be in the auction. The Diamond Mitchell, fingers crossed, he gets traded still. Um, a huge Jimmy Butler, Ricky Patch auto right there. You've got Luca PSA 10 silver, a dual auto of Stockton and Malone from Eminence. Uh, some other really, really cool football cards with the Sean Taylor white numbered off, uh, what is that, 869 SGC 10. It's a population of one that's a super sick card. Uh, one of the biggest cards in this entire stream or in this entire auction is this 2017 National Treasures Patrick Mahomes rookie auto, the future uh, 25. This was donated by Duke Johnson, the uh, NFL running back for the Buffalo Bills, uh, formerly of the Browns. And I'm sure you might draft him at one year on your fantasy team. I definitely did for a PPR league, but super cool to see that. Uh, you got plenty of different quarterbacks to buy heading into the season. And also this mosaic Jalen Hurts black rookie one of one PSA 10 NFL debut. Uh, Nate. Why is this card so important right now? Because the Trevor Lawrence 2021 Mosaic NFL debut Nebula out of one. Got it right this time. Yep. Sold last week on the PWCC auction for $12,000. Things like $12,600. And it was a BGS 9. So this is a PSA 10 black one of one of Hertz. Super excited for that. Want to see what it sells for one of the best SGC grade cards in this auction that I bought at the Midwest Monster in uh, Indianapolis from Andy from Indy Card Exchange. This Jamar Chase RPA hit a 9510 number out 25 from Immaculate. And you can buy his buddy right there, Joe Burrow, the Obsidian Ricky Auto of 25 PSA 8 in the exact same auction. And then there's some amazing hockey cards in here too, which I'll talk about one in a little bit. And then we've got some other fun ones like a golf one, like a Bryson DeChambeau uh, 9510 jersey auto there's a, some really good soccer here it's a polizic eminence auto of 10 and a polizic kaboom psa 9 shout out to cle soccer cards and uh hannah from she collects cards right there for the uh, polizic cards and then some other nice rookie cards from soccer and as we go down onto the next page really quickly you are going to see that we've got some f1 and even some non-sport like Bieber and drake a vanilla ice auto uh anthony anderson the star of blackish auto right there sgc 1010 two comic books from spider-man Zion debut ticket PSA 10 and some sweet Pokemon cards all in the same exact auction. Uh, it's going to be a great time. And now we're just going to look at two cards quick, one for me, one for Nate, uh, that we really want to try to, well, maybe want to win, but at least that's special to us in this auction. All right. For me, it is this Jeter Downs 2019 Bowman Chrome Red Shimmer out of five SGC 10. And the reason I'm interested in this is because I was the one that pulled it. So I pulled it on one of our break streams. And the people that were on the break stream, a number of them, but especially the guy that pulled this, was generous enough to donate it to the Camp Kesem charity. So because of that reason, because it got pulled and then donated instantaneously, I am very curious to see what this can get up to and uh, how much we can raise for charity through this card. Who knows? Maybe even I'll be the one to buy it because I pulled it. <laughs> he did just hit his first career MLB home run, too. So hopefully maybe a little bit of action because of that. He did. For me, the card I'm really excited to see sell and maybe even try to win myself is this Wayne Gretzky 1998 Bowman's Best Refractor number out 400 SGC 10. Uh, Bowman's Best is always one of my favorite sets, and this hockey set is one of, uh, in my opinion, the best hockey sets from the 90s. I really love the look of these cards, especially the Atomics Ab 100. This is the Refractor out 400, but I bought this raw at the Midwest Monster in Indianapolis, in Indianapolis. And uh, it just like is really, really cool to see a card from 98 that wasn't graded before. Hit, in, hit a 10, a gem main grade, SGC 10. It's a population of one. Um, I know Ross sells super strong, like $400 around there, maybe up to 500 if it's a clean copy. And I feel like that the SGC 10 can do way, way above that because to get a grade like this on a card like this is, is so cool to see. I'm just really excited to see what it sells for. Thanks, everyone, for watching this week's 5 of 5 Flip Quest episode. We can't be more excited for July 31st for this auction to end. There's so many fun cards in here that I want to try to win to add to my collection and help send kids to camp for free. Um, it's going to be a super important night, so we really urge all of you, if you have the means, or if you just want to come and watch the market and see how well these cards do for the custom kids and mean the world to us. Do not forget to come to our live stream on YouTube that night, Sunday the 31st at 9.45 p.m. Eastern Time. If you can't make the National, it might be a way for you to interact. Uh, maybe feeling like you are at the national at the same time doing something good to help out people who really need it. Thanks everyone for watching and we will see you all in the live stream.